everybody, Resident Loser Jeremy here. Pro Tools just released an update, Pro Tools 2020. Big point of controversy here is Pro Tools is finally getting something that other DAWs have had for years. Folder tracks. Sounds silly, we already have aux tracks. What's the point, what's the difference? I really think it could change at least my template and I'm excited to see the potential that this has. So we're gonna go check it out. I'm gonna head to the studio right now, take a look at it, see what's going on. Even the cars that are here are all parked like two or three spots away from each other. There is no one else here. Nobody deserted out here. Do you know what? I think it's good it's deserted. I mean, I, I come to work. I'm the only one that has to be here. I think it's safe for me to come from home to here. I'm not interacting with anyone on my drive. These other places have a lot of employees and they see a lot of people walk through the door. I have the benefit of working remote, so it's kind of nice. I'm excited to get Pro Tools started. Let's go. So folder tracks are something that a lot of other DAWs have had for a very long time. And us as Pro Tools users, this is gonna be our first dive into something like this. And I know a lot of people are already down, probably already thinking, well, why even use Pro Tools at some point? Look, when you find something that works for you and you learn that inside and out, and it's also making you money. It's, I have no desire to switch to another DAW. So I'm kind of with Pro Tools. I know it inside and out. And any other things they kind of add on this is just icing on the cake. I feel like if we're constantly worried about what DAW we're using, this one has this, this one doesn't have this, it really gets in the way of actually making the music. I feel like the benefit of having folder tracks up to this point would have not mattered in comparison to all the other things that I know I can do inside of Pro Tools. I know how to do them very, very fast. And that's that's the whole point. Find something that you know fast. This just happens to be the program I was trained on. This happens to be the program that was used in a lot of the studios that I worked in. So this is the program that I know that I'm comfortable with, that my system runs flawlessly, and I just don't really wanna take the time to learn the quirks of another system while I'm also trying to generate money because this is my job. Anyway, that conversation's done. Boulder tracks. I've already kind of played with this session here uh, and I've got my automation lanes open. I love that addition to Pro Tools 2020. It's not an add-on to the folder tracks, but instead of actually coming and going down to your volume and stuff, it's just, you can just click your automation lanes on right there. I love it, really cool. So can I still see my waveform? No, I can't. So let's go up to, let's go to a normal track, say it for some reason I want to ride the kick drum. Cool, so I can view the wave and this. And you could still do this on a normal track. This just used to be a plus button and it would add something down. I, I like this addition though, I like that. Now a folder track, let's see what we've got here. I have all of my drums, but just for an example, uh, one thing I don't like here that they've done, uh, If normally if I wanna bust this, I'm literally gonna, uh, I'm on a Mac, so shift option and then click the output and you can go to new track. This is by far the quickest way to make an aux, I think, because it'll automatically route everything to that because you've hit shift option, which applies to whatever tracks you have highlighted. And then I could create something. So let's just drums two, why not? And it's gonna make an aux track. Now where it puts that aux track is kind of weird. It just pops it in the middle of everything. I don't like that. I'd rather see it at the top or the bottom. Um, but everything is now routed to that. I have all of my drums and then this new aux, which is named drums two, and then it's drums two and it's going where I need it to go. So don't know if you can, can you not undo this anymore? Oh, that's a bummer. That's a big, big old, big old bummer. So we're gonna open session data and go back. I will say after using this for a while on a few different mixes, this feels very stable. One thing I do notice, uh, if I have to change my playback engine, change the hardware buffer in my playback engine, like you would normally do if you're going between tracking and mixing, 
I get an AAE error every time, or not, which is weird. Uh, I couldn't figure out what was happening. I thought I was fixing the issue, and then all it takes is restart Pro Tools, and you're working fine for some reason. So that's weird. I think that's a patch that's going to be coming, and just fix that. No problem. What I am finding just after two days of using this, I love the ability to quickly change an aux track that you already have. Let's just say my template's made up of mainly aux tracks. You can change those to routing folders, which is really cool. And the difference between routing folders and folders, uh, and I don't know if these all exist in other DAWs or if their functionality is exactly the same. I just don't know that. And a routing folder is more, it's kind of the in-between between a folder and an aux, it's really handy. I've been finding way more uses for routing folders than just regular folders. However, I do really like it. Um, let's take, for example, all of our drums here. One thing I wish you could do is go to new track and create a folder, but you can't. I don't know why that is. You can make an aux and then turn that into a routing folder, which I'll show you real quick. So let's say drums two. And there it goes, putting it in some random spot. Whoops. So now what I can do, I can right click on this, convert aux to routing folder, and then I literally just drag everything I want in that folder into the folder. And I missed it. There we go. And then this would then get routed to where I need it to go. And one of the cool things about a routing folder, you can treat it like an aux, as in you could put plugins on here if you want to. I could put a channel strip on there. I can process all the drums together just like an aux if I were using that. However, I don't really care about that right now. I don't really, I don't need that at this moment. But what I like about it, you can now very quickly solo everything within a folder. Now, you could do this before by making groups, but there's a lot of different ways that I like to use groups and sometimes just making a group of something and you want to solo just one thing in there. You can hit the, you can turn off groups real quick, you can turn them back on, that's fine, but this just feels a lot better. I can actually solo the actual aux or the group folder rather than solo everything in there, which before I would have all of my tracks at the top of my session, my drums, my bass, my guitars, keys, down the line. And then at the very bottom of the session, I would have all the auxes that would then feed into the master. This is definitely a different way of looking at it, but you were never able to just solo an aux because that's you're just soloing what's on that aux. So you have to record, or uh, you would have to solo safe everything within there so that if you did solo that aux, you could hear what was there but it didn't make sense to quite do that every time for a lot of different reasons. Is when you solo safe everything, if you only want to listen to, say, the snare in your drum bus, you, you'll have to unsolo safe everything, and it didn't make sense. So what you would then do is solo safe your auxes. So if you solo something inside of that, it would then play through the aux. This is a little more of a natural flow, I feel like, and it's not slowing me down. I don't have to remember why am I not hearing something. I don't have to solo safe something but you still certainly can. Um, I like to not solo safe it. That way, if I just want to listen to my synths, I just go to that aux. I keep saying aux, but they're routing folders. In my, they're kind of acting like the same thing. I don't think Pro Tools so much added folder tracks as they did really adapt what an aux is for us. Um, and I really like that. I like that idea a lot. Uh, one cool thing you can do as far as drum editing uh, that used to be an issue in teaching people how to do this, if you create everything and put it into a folder here. So let's just view this. I wonder if just selecting this without even looking at it, selecting the drums and hitting tab to transient. Oh, that's cool. 
So even without seeing the track and exactly what's happening, you can still control everything inside of it as if it were a group. And one thing about editing drums, you need to make sure you group everything. And if you miss one thing, all of a sudden you've shifted your phase and it's not cohesive anymore. As you can see, I don't have my group enabled. I can do one track at a time. I can move this over here. It's not pretty. That's gonna really mess up my drum sound. But if I'm working in here, if I'm working up on my folder track, my routing folder track, which is essentially an aux, I can go up here, hit tab to transient, and then break it just like I normally would. Boom, love that. Now I wonder if I could select all of this and use beat detective like I would. So let's zoom out here, make sure, let's go ahead and commit everything here. so that we know we have a solid track to work with. Now, I'm gonna turn off my group, so you can see I'm not, I don't have groups enabled here. The drums are not in a group, an active group, but they are within this folder. So, I'm just curious. If I have this selected in the folder, and I open up Beat Detective, Command and eight on the number pad, by the way, huh. That totally works. That's cool. Okay. I like that a lot. So then I could just hit command zero, lock it to the grid. I don't know you can do all this within beat detective. I just don't like to. I like to trim clip, start to fill, and then add my own. Actually, I like seven. Make sure they're equal power. Oh, that's neat. That's cool. Now none of this, I don't need to keep any of this because the drums were already edited, but that is, that's really, really cool. You know what would be an interesting exercise? Say we've got all of our vocals. Okay, background vocal in a folder. I'm just gonna slap Melodyne on this for fun, just as an experiment. Ah, I hate that it opens up that website every single time. So I'm on the BGV track. So I've got Melodyne set up on the background vocal track and let's just play a chorus here. So essentially what this should hear is four background vocal tracks all at once, and if I if this algorithm finds it in polyphonic mode, it should be the same as tuning all these in general. I'm not gonna show this to you. This is unreleased. That's pretty cool. Now, it, it, I wouldn't do it, you can, but I wouldn't do it like this. In like polyphonic mode for Mel Melodyne exists and you can do it, but I feel like you always end up with these weird phase shifts because it's not really picking out every individual voice, it's picking out different harmonics and, but you can. If there was something you absolutely needed to fix, you could do it this way and that's pretty cool. I don't necessarily know that I'm going to use just regular old folders very much. As you can see, if, if I wanna put all these things in a folder, I can. So we go to create a new track go to oops, basic folder and I wish there was a way if you had a if you had this highlighted and you went to create a folder I wish Pro Tools just knew you wanted those things in the folder I understand why they're not doing that but I really feel like going here new track should be able to select the folder track here and already have those things routed and inside of the folder that seems like it needs to be a feature I don't know why that's not a feature right now anyway this is pretty cool you can still operate a regular old folder. Okay, so that's one cool thing. If you have a folder within another folder, it looks like it already knows to, to solo safe that folder for you. So you're not gonna run into a situation where I've got my drum soloed here, but they're not soloed here. That's really cool. And it goes the other way. So if you solo the parent folder, the folder on the outermost side of this, it will solo everything on the inside. That's really cool. There's a lot of functionality built in here. And again, it's so nice that I can click that away and not look at it. And I'm not searching everywhere all the time. This is, I'm really digging this. And you can see how quickly it cleans up a session with all these 
synths that are going on, especially in this. Um, and this is, you know, still fairly sloppy, but this is pretty cool. I really like this. I think this is a Pro Tools win for a change. It feels stable. These folder tracks are awesome. That couple little bugs, I wish you could definitely select those folder tracks when you're going to create a new output from a new track. I wish you could do it there. I don't know why. Let me see if I can recreate this AAE thing for you. So trucking along at 512, say I want to bump this up to 1024. But now I'm introducing delay and this is where it's happened to me. So I want to go back down. And every time I bring it back up to where it is, if I get this error once, it won't stop until I restart Pro Tools and then it's fine. So I want to actually look up what this is. AAE 9013. Pro Tools is missing a file or drive. There's no way to adjust the AA's preferred size. Okay, so exactly what it's telling us to do is completely impossible. Makes total sense. We're just gonna open Pro Tools back up and see if we still, and this is 2020.3 uh, for those curious. And if this is like just every other time I've done this, I have all these errors, no matter how I, what I do to change that playback engine, it will not work until I shut down and then restart Pro Tools. But again, it generally feels very, very stable. This is me trying to create this issue to show you guys. And we're fine. That's so interesting. Anyway, guys, I'm a fan, Pro Tools 2020. Uh, just to let you know what I'm on here, I'm on a Mac. I'm running High Sierra 10.13.6. I tend not to update unless I absolutely have to. So this is running extremely smooth for me uh, for the last few days on a lot of different sessions. I didn't have any issues migrating previous sessions from other, from other templates and other versions of Pro Tools into this. It went very, very smooth. I didn't notice any hiccups whatsoever. Um, there really were no issues that I've had in the past when upgrading to Pro Tools for the first, like for the really, really quick updates like this. Um, I'm never first in line to do it, but I wanted to check out a folder track and see what that was all about. And I really think it's going to change all of my templates and my mixes. I think just being able to look at these massive sessions with 100 plus tracks and get them down to like six or eight routing folder tracks before my master is so nice. This is a session I've changed from not using folders to having folders. So this is just a mess right now, but I can definitely see how folders in the future and then using this workflow from the very beginning would make a lot of sense. Um, that said, if you're in the middle of a bunch of sessions, I still think you could go ahead and do this um, simply because of the fact that we are now able to create a track without Pro Tools stopping. That's pretty cool. Either way, this is a really interesting update for Pro Tools and it's a huge workflow change for a lot of us without getting in the way of our typical workflow. So I would definitely update this, have at it. It seems to be running fine on my system. Your experience may vary. Definitely check out what works with your system and what doesn't. Uh, look at the system requirements, double check all of that stuff. Like I said, I'm running a very old version of Mac OS 10.13.6. I hope you like this. Go ahead and check out Avid. If you've already got an account and you have the ability to upgrade, I would go ahead and do it if it works for your system for sure. If you guys enjoyed this, go ahead and give us a thumbs up. Go down there, hit that subscribe button. While you're down there, go ahead and hit the bell so you can be notified every time I put out a video. And if you want, go check out our website. I'll have a link in the description where you can purchase drum samples. We have some free guitar IRs, free bass IRs available. President Loser Jeremy, I'll catch you on the next one.